I love indoor. That's right, I'm here at the AIOC meeting in indoor to find out what young ophthalmologists are up to at the hackathon where they're turning product ideas into 3D prints within about 48 hours time. It's pretty amazing stuff. Um, we're basically here observing that and then we're gonna go right on to APAO Bangkok after this, where I'm sure young ophthalmologists are up to great things there as well. But here is indoor. Let's take a look. Ashish, great to see you today, brother. Same here. All right, so here we are at the uh, hackathon today. Tell me more about, you know, what this is all about. So uh, we are at the All India Ophthalmic Conference here in Indore and uh, for the first time we are having a hackathon in eye care. So hackathon is a concept uh, which is very old and uh, what is going to happen is over the next two days doctors and engineers are going to collaborate and work on few problem statements. So we have about 15 to 20 doctors who have registered and we have engineers you can see in the background. We right. have uh, got some 3D printers. We have got electronic circuits, Arduino boards, and uh, we are going to work on a surgical instrument or uh, a 3D printed uh, device with a smartphone. It could be a mobile based application. So the idea is to accelerate the innovation process over two days and uh, all the think tanks together. So in a group effort, uh, the idea which would take months to probably uh, get into reality, we can do it very quickly in two days time. So it's interesting because you think like, you know, a lot of the multinational companies must take, you know, years to develop their products. Maybe they have focus groups and, and all these things. And here you are in two days time, you're going to think about a product, develop it and then 3D print it. That's pretty amazing. So that's the whole uh, concept. We need frugal innovations. We need it to be low cost. We need it to have an impact. We so things which could either uh, make eye care more accessible, lower cost, or uh, very user friendly, probably with a smartphone so the technicians can use it. So the idea is how we can impact the rural eye care delivery as well, or lower the cost of components which are provided by the multinational companies. So what, what product do you think might come out of this? Any, any thoughts on that? So we are uh, probably planning to work on an amblyopia iPad sensor. So wow. the children uh, have to patch the eye for about uh, four to six hours. Right. So the weaker eye is patched usually. And right. we recommend about four to six hours, but we actually do not know how many hours they do that. So we have a pressure sensor, which if we incorporate in the eye patch, we might be able to predict and uh, based on a timer, sense how many hours that uh, patching was done, the occlusion treatment. So when we follow up the patients after a month, we will actually know if the treatment is working or not. And should we try something else? Yeah. So that is one new concept. And uh, there are a lot of more problem statements which uh, doctors have put in. Like another thing could be uh, in vitrectomy, we could use uh, a multifunction light pipe. Okay. So the light pipe which we use, yeah. attaching another instrument in the front of it, which could act like a membrane pick. So the prototype can be 3D printed easily. So that will help in uh, diabetic vitrectomies for membrane dissections. Like making the light pipe a dual function instrument. And, and why do you call this the hackathon, by the way? It's a cool word. Yeah, so hackathon, uh, so hackers are basically people who you know, try to intercept some uh, very safeguarded documents or break into important files. but. Uh, so this term has, uh, you know, taken off. So hackathons used to be conducted traditionally by MITs in the uh, US, and that term has sort of carried on. Right. So it is basically to hack and to innovate uh, and think in a different way. That's great. Well, Ashish, thanks so much for joining us today, and uh, we've got doctors arriving. So uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Now we're going to Rohit. Great to see you here, Rohit. Hi. All right, now tell me, uh, this is your brainchild, the hackathon. How'd you come up with this idea? So a few years back, I was attending one such event in Mumbai, which was conducted by Godrej, and they were finding us a solution for the infant feeding bottle. Yeah. And there I thought, you know, if an industry can do it for the daily consumer products, we can do it a focused, uh, you know, uh, innovation <clears throat> workshop for the eye care. Right. And India is a country where, you know, we do a lot of, you know, 
Jugaad. Jugaad is a term basically. Yeah. Where, you know, we try to come up with our own unique solutions because we cannot go for the Western expensive, uh, you know, solutions. So in India, we are looking out for cost-effective solutions, and that's the way. You know, when you travel in trains or wherever you see, people have their own way of doing things. So that's the whole idea of conducting this two days focus program. Is that doctors, engineers, designers come together on a platform to create a low cost system. So we have created a, a product what we had used for glaucoma screening a few months back during the annual conference of Maharashtra Ophthalmic Society. Right. So here, like Ashish has discussed, that we are thinking of something like an amblyopia patch sensor. Uh, the other is, you know, enhancing the light pipe mechanisms. The other thing could be, you know, coming up with our own design of supracoroidal, uh, you know, needles, which can be used for supracoroidal injections. So any idea can be made into a low-cost product if and our team is working dedicatedly on that. And with the today's era of rapid prototyping with uh, respect to 3D technology and laser cutters, this is possible at a cost-effective price. So you don't need to invest millions of dollars. You can do it at a much lesser price if you have the right team in place. That's the idea. And we want to introduce doctors to the idea of rapid innovation and prototyping. And you know, I remember that, that you know there are doctors who, for example, are constantly working in, in, in small incision environments. And oftentimes you might see, for example, in, in the West, a doctor's name ends up on a new surgical knife because they've tweaked it a little bit and that's called innovation. Right. But I feel like sometimes in ophthalmology, you know, we're a little bit myopic, so to speak, about innovation. And, and this is exciting because it seems like, you know, in a, in a short period of time, you can think about things that are real breakthroughs and, and innovate in a, in, a, in a true way. Absolutely, I agree with you that these kind of focus things, because I believe in India when I see it, a lot of ophthalmologists, they have come up with their own unique products. Like I know a guy who has come up with a capsular excess marker or you know he has come up with a machine which is quite similar to Mabo Swamp, but the cost of that machine is just $500 and you know we know the cost of these uh, lippy flow machines by j and so, Yeah. The only problem is that these products are used by those individual doctors. They don't get into a fine product. So this is a platform where people can come up with their ideas, make a prototype, and then take it to the next level of you know marketing. Awesome. Well, I guess the, the age of 3D printing also helps in that regard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rapid prototyping is going to be the key in innovation. And do you think that, interestingly, you know, India is a great market for this to happen? Um, you know, perhaps because of the need for low-cost alternatives, it could drive innovation in this regard. Absolutely. You know, so India, if you see, we are one of the powerhouses of ophthalmology. Reason being, Arvind Eye Care reduced the cost of intraocular lenses from hundred dollars to two dollars. Yeah. And that is why you know there was a breakthrough. That is, so we cannot every time replicate the West. We have to innovate our own. We have to come up with products which we can afford for our population. And that's where this rapid prototyping and these kind of you know innovation workshops or what we can say hackathon or jwarathon are really useful. You know, obviously here at Pi Magazine, um, we're really interested in innovation. Um, and so maybe you know the 21st century will be the age of Asia Pacific innovation versus Western innovation. Well, I feel this is a era of collaboration. So we should you know look at it as a global collaboration to reduce the cost. Because you know, you know, we need to learn from Tesla. That guy makes something beautiful, and he, you know, keeps his patents open so that more people can use it. So yeah. rather than you know exploiting those patents for financial gains, we can collaborate in a larger way. And not think like you know Asia Pacific or you know the Western, uh, you know, the American continent or the European continent. Let's come together, use those patents, use those ideas to you know come up with low-cost healthcare solutions. Great. Hey, well, thanks for joining us today, and. Uh, we love this hackathon. <laughs> so these are some set of softwares where we uh, uh, scale up our models or design our models and uh, set them up for a print. Yeah. So we are in the process of probably starting the whole uh, innovation here. So the doctors are going to guide us what, what are the clinical requirements of the recruitments like. And right. then we are going to quickly do a dimension check with them. Then we are going to model them on computer. Okay. And then we are going to load them for prints. Sweet.
So what do you think is going to come out of here uh, over the course of 48 hours? Uh, so over the course of 48 hours, we're probably going to target six different problems and we're going to come up with an MVP type of solution to each one of them. Yeah. Where we're catering to a medical problem, a giant problem, uh, and giving a very basic solution to it, which is like a frugal innovation in overdose. Oh, wow. Okay. So six different problems. What are what are, what are the six different problems, would you say? So, uh, so the problems you much for any hackathon are not generally fixed. Their teams come up, they yeah. have a discussion and they come up with the problem statements after the discussion with the scope of time length and the inventory available. That is a typical structure. So we are having the teams coming in now so we'll have a discussion and we'll quickly finalize the problems. And, and you're basically a 3D printing expert here. So what, what kind of 3D printer is this? Is it is it you know, really good for, for medical device manufacturing? Uh, not really, this is an FDM printer which is used for a basic prototyping, so it's not a medical grade upgraded printer, but this is where you start from. Okay. Uh, and then you can upgrade to medical materials and you can print using various technologies like MGM or you can use SLS technology to print. Uh, this is handy, you can have it in a setup uh, which is open like this or any classroom environment to learn, which is why we've got this printer. That's great. And by the way, we're going to the uh, Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology in Bangkok shortly. Um, do you think that there's things that, that the rest of the world, uh, Asia Pacific, can learn from this process? Uh, so 3D printing is a technology which not just ophthal, any particular field can learn it and quickly prototype. So if you can view, uh, so, so probably if you're working on a camera and some uh, some part breaks up, yeah. so you can quickly model it in a computer, put, uh, put a plastic part into print and you have a part which you can replace and work on. Awesome. Uh, and you mentioned again this 3D pen here. Is this usually yes. what you would use before it goes to no, the, so the big print? Are, these are typically used when you want fragile models, when you want something which is uh, thread based, or, or probably when you want to fill up gaps that are uh, that happen during the print. Right. So there are some abrasions which happen during the print, and in that process, you fill it up with a pen. And, and Rob, do you think Mozart, with his innovative mind, would approve of 3D printing today? Yeah, it's like perhaps there's a sound that you're missing. You could just create an instrument and just make the sound yourself. It's <laughs> good. So you can see these are ceramic printed. Wow. This is ceramic which is printed. Okay. What what is that? It's, it's a ceramic. Oh, okay. These are transparent prints, so it's possible to print something transparent also. Oh, there we go. Okay, very nice, very nice. It's possible to print something which is flexible. Oh, okay. It's possible to create molds like these, which are basic molds. Yeah. So that you can get a quick uh, cast out uh, from the mold. Very accurate. Yeah. Wow. So that's... It's essentially manufacturing, isn't it? But it's yes. just... It's additive manufacturing. Yeah. So rather than removing the material, you add up to the material that you're in need of. And this is called a, as an FDM printer. It's fused deposition model. Right. So you use something like a filament spool. Yeah. And the spool gets printed into parts like this. How long does it usually take? So a part like this would take about four hours to print. Four hours. Okay. Wow. And what's, what's the biggest thing you've ever printed? Um, I printed an arm which took about... An arm? Uh, yeah, a prosthetic arm which took about 38 hours to print. Yeah. Wow. Did it work after that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, hey, um, thanks for joining us today, by the way. We didn't even ask your name. Uh, I'm Lavina Uthmani. Uh, I've done my graduation into biomedical, my master's into product design. So I typically work with doctors to innovate. Awesome. Hey, well, thanks for joining us today. Hey, I'm Matt Young, CEO of Pi Magazine, and I'm here at the Prestige Institute of Management. Um, it's interesting because we came to Indoor in order to go to an ophthalmic conference, but we made a friend and they said, hey, can we come over and do a little guest lecture for, you, for us about the magazine? So we came over, it was crazy. There were like name cards, placards for us to like speak on a panel, and it was all ad hoc. I was like, packing my luggage and then suddenly speaking at this conference, like just all ad hoc. Now we're going to enter into a collaboration with these guys, sales, content, and uh, 
to be an incubator for a company media wise, it's just nuts. I'm so excited to be a part of this uh, new university here and uh, we're just gonna rock it by magazine. So meanwhile, let's go see what was on the uh, what we did at the lecture today. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go.